Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be assembling some prototype PCBs for different constant current LED drivers. I've designed and ordered these uh, PCBs a while ago and the goal here is to test different constant current LED drivers. I have ones that are switch mode and ones that are linear and I wanted to see if I can get away with using the linear ones because they are significantly lower part count at the expense of burning energy away and generating more heat. The parts used in this uh, project were supplied by LCSC.com which is sponsoring this video. They are a reliable distributor of parts from China. I highly recommend you check out their uh, website and inventory. It's a bit different than your standard uh, electronics uh, distributor and you'll find many interesting chips uh, that would otherwise be very hard to source from other places. I haven't ordered a steel stencil for these uh, PCBs. I'm going to hand assemble them. I'm going to use some of this uh, mechanic leaded solder paste which comes in a syringe and then I'm going to reflow the boards over a hot plate. One hint here about the paste if the uh, syringe is uh, very old uh, the paste might get dry which will make it unsuitable for the job and not to mention hard to push out of the uh, syringe. So try to keep the paste fresh by storing it in a fridge um, and replacing it when it starts to dry up or separate inside the syringe. Now manually applying paste is not ideal. There will be unequal amounts of paste distributed on the pads but for our intents and purposes it will be good enough. We're building prototypes here after all so everything is going to be fine and when it's not we can always rework it. Now for placing the parts I'm going to follow the PCB layout and make sure I get the orientation right for all the parts. The alignment has to be almost right. The paste will act with its surface tension to pull the part into correct alignment during reflow but you do want to get it almost center right from the start because there is only so much surface tension can do and with the manual process of applying paste the forces might not be equal from uh, all sides of the part so it's best to get, get it as centered as possible from the start. Now for the reflow I'm gonna use this hot plate which I reviewed in uh, Vollog 210. It's pretty useful for small prototypes like this, easy to use and gets the job done. I will set a higher temperature like 290 degrees Celsius which is plenty for the paste I use and the thermal inertia of the plate will kind of control the heat up process and profile. Once I observe the reflow is finished I am turning off the plate and gradually allowing it to cool off uh, because you don't want any rapid cooling that might cause cracks in the solder joints. This is how the boards look after reflow and a bit of uh, rework. Pretty decent results on the assembly process and now it's time to power them up and do some measurements. I am particularly interested in how these two linear regulators will deal with the dissipated heat. These are two different uh, driver chips and I tried to use uh, different uh, layout methods. For this one, for example, I've placed a bunch of uh, thermal vias around the chip and uh, those thermal vias uh, go to the back layer where I have some more um, uh, copper pads. But I didn't extend those copper pads. There was plenty of room here to extend them. I just wanted to see how the chip deals with some uh, limited uh, dissipation capability. For this one I didn't use any thermal vias although there was uh, plenty of uh, room on the back where I could have uh, added some copper layers for heat dissipation. I've just increased the pads uh, around each pin of the chip to help dissipate the heat on the top layer. These two boards will be powered from 12 volts the current through the LEDs will be 25 milliamps up to 30 milliamps. I think there will be some variation between the two chips and the total string voltage is uh, 10 volts and that is uh, calculated using uh, the uh, typical LED forward voltage which in our case this is the LED that we're using and in our case the typical forward voltage is 2 volts uh, we have 5 LEDs so that equals 10 volts of voltage will be dropping on the LED string. That also means 12 volts minus 10 volts we have 2 volts dropping on the regulator 
times our current 25 milliamps and is equal to 50 milliwatts. So our regulator should be dissipating about 50 milliwatts. And I believe uh, the cooling solution that I have cho chosen here is enough for that kind of uh, power. I can also measure the current by removing this uh, jumper which interrupts the ground line to the LEDs and we can insert our ammeter uh, in the circuit and check the current. This is the NSI 45025 and this chip should regulate to 25 milliamps. Right now I'm powering the board with 12 volts and as we can see the chip regulates at around 19 to 20 milliamps but if I increase the voltage uh, this is 14 volts we can see it comes close to the uh, 25 milliamps uh, given in the data sheet so this chip uh, does regulate in constant current but it also has a variation with the input voltage so it's not exactly ideal but for simple applications this will do the job for my application, considering the input voltage will be between um, 12 and uh, 14 volts, this chip might do the job just fine, but I don't like the fact that at 12 volts I'm getting uh, less current through the LEDs. So let's check our other solution. This is uh, the second uh, constant current uh, LED driver that I've built. This one is based on the BCR402. And this is also a single chip solution, only that it uses an external resistor for setting the current. In this case, I used a 100 ohm resistor and we can see the current is about 28 milliamps. So I'm already liking this chip better because look at this, if I vary the voltage, let's go to 14 volts. The current barely varies, so this chip Ha does have a better regulation and also has the advantage of uh, allowing you to set different uh, current values with an external resistor. So this chip uh, becomes my favorite uh, as of now. Next I want to do some thermal tests because I want to see how these chips will cope with continuously uh, running in under this uh, setup. So I'll leave these two running. Uh, I've adjusted the input voltage to about 13 volts just to increase the current a bit on, on this board to kind of match the current I have on, on this board. So I'll leave these running for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then check them with a thermal camera to see what kind of temperatures we have on the LEDs and also on the driver chip. So I've had these running actually for more than one hour because I was busy around here and couldn't come back to the bench to check on them. Uh, the ambient temperature is uh, about uh, 23 degrees Celsius and uh, as you can see on the overlay that I shot with my uh, FLIR uh, camera, the temperatures on the LEDs were about 50 degrees Celsius and maybe slightly lower on the uh, driver chips. Uh, the temperatures are very similar between the uh, uh, first driver board and the second driver board and uh, I've also double checked those uh, temperatures with a uh, thermocouple because I can never be too sure with my small uh, uh, FLIR camera uh, because of different emissivity uh, properties um, it can be easy to get tricked into measuring the wrong temperature so I've uh, double checked with a thermocouple and uh, indeed uh, the temperatures are quite stable and uh, I'm liking what I see with these uh, uh, simple linear drivers but of course these uh, results were to be expected even from the calculations that we did before there was very little uh, power to be dissipated if you remember I've calculated about uh, 50 milliwatts and uh, as a last test you can also do the uh, finger test and it's uh, just barely warm. The key with these uh, linear voltage regulators is to optimize for your particular setup and circuit and have the least amount of voltage dropping on the regulator. That means designing the series LED string total voltage to be pretty close to the input voltage and just leave a bit of uh, margin uh, which is usually coded in the datasheet of the driver chip. These are the other two boards uh, where we have switching regulators and uh, the image is pretty clear from the start here we're going to have a much higher efficiency on the driver chip 
thus much lower losses the efficiency is probably uh, upwards of 90 percent in the case of these uh, switch mode uh, driver chips so they are going to be dissipating a low amount of heat so we should be fine in terms of temperature stability on the driver chip but on the other hand i am using some high power white leds on these boards and uh, those will be our main problem in terms of dissipated heat things start getting complicated if you're trying to cool these uh, high power leds in a space constraint application especially if there is only passive cooling available like i'm doing here i'm only going to be driving these leds at uh, 300 up to 400 milliamps but still we have three of them and since the efficiency of an, uh, a white led is very low compared to the efficiency of our driver chip uh, i'm expecting these pcb to be insufficient uh, for cooling these leds but anyway let's uh, power the board and uh, do some measurements first let's uh, just apply 12 volts and make sure that both both of our boards are working even at uh, 340 milliamps these are really bright so our first board is working and our second board is working as well now let's also measure the currents on these boards the driver chips uh, use the same uh, resistor method for selecting the uh, drive current but since i didn't have exactly the calculated resistor value uh, we might uh, find the uh, results a bit different between the two boards so the white board is pulling about 340 milliamps and on the red board we have a similar current of uh, 315 milliamps these are the leds that i use on this board and take this with a bit of skepticism because it's not verified information but i believe these to be a copy of a cree xbd led chip in 2525 package manufactured by ETI which is a Chinese factory of optoelectronics they claim uh, 300 milliamps up to 1 amp forward current 3 to 3.6 volts forward voltage and up to 3 watts output power but the Cree LED is just 1 watt output power so I'm guessing uh, this is just the AliExpress listing uh, tripling the output power but I believe these to be 1 watt LEDs uh, this info is of course all gathered from the AliExpress listing and uh, it's not the most reliable source of info. I couldn't find a datasheet for these uh, uh, LEDs but I'm gonna drive them in their lower range 300 to 400 milliamps and since their forward voltage is higher and uh, my power supply will be 12 volts I've used just three of these LEDs in series to remain below our input voltage even in the worst case scenario with a 3.6 volts forward voltage uh, per LED. For the thermal test I'm going to use the thermal couple as well as the uh, thermal camera and I expect these to get hot uh, pretty quickly. So let's see. Let's start a countdown. These are really bright and uh, it's really hard to, to measure the temperature without them blinding me. But as we can see just 15 seconds uh, in the test and we are already approaching 50 degrees Celsius. We are one minute and a half into the test and we have 65 degrees Celsius. The temperature continues to climb on these LEDs so we can clearly say that this PCB is not capable of cooling these LEDs. As we saw this PCB is not capable of providing adequate cooling for these uh, three LEDs uh, even if they are driven at only 300 milliamps. Uh, as the design of this PCB it's using the entire backside copper field to act as a heat sink and about uh, this much of copper fill on the top side and this is clearly insufficient to keep cool these three LEDs their temperature will go above 70 degrees Celsius and maybe more until they destroy themselves in an ambient temperature of uh, 24 degrees Celsius you really don't want your LEDs running hotter than uh, 70 or 80 degrees Celsius because their uh, lifetime will dramatically decrease with as the temperature increases 
since the second board is running at a similar current with exactly the same LEDs and the same area for cooling, um, I'm expecting the same results from these boards as well. Now I will continue searching for proper cooling uh, solutions for these uh, white LEDs, but that's an entirely different video, it's not the purpose of this video. Today I just wanted to show you how I assemble these boards and how I test them, hopefully sharing some tips and tricks that you can use in your own projects. As you can see in the design of this uh, red board, I left the uh, solder mask off under the LEDs. So uh, this way I can maybe attach this to a uh, very small heatsink to help keep cool these uh, LEDs. I'm glad all of these uh, driver boards uh, work fine. And uh, now all that remains is to find the uh, proper cooling solutions for the white LEDs and use them in my final application. As usual, I will be happy to hear your feedback in the comment section. Let me know what you think, what cooling solutions have you used for LEDs, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.